Blessings in Jesus and hallelujah, friends. Welcome back to Hayek Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life, and Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And let every tongue confess and say with hearts of gratitude, hallelujah. Well, friends, today is August the 11th in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is one a day for the soul. Now, I want to begin this morning by reading you something that I saw yesterday on the morning news. Now, I've taken some excerpts from the internet so that I can read this to you and not simply to attempt to call it from memory. Dallas megachurch pastor Robert Jeffress, one of President Donald Trump's evangelical advisors who even preached the morning of Trump's inauguration, said... There is a great deal of confusion among Christians when it comes to this idea of using force to topple evil. And I wanted to clarify that I believe the Bible, especially Romans 13, does give President Trump moral authority to use whatever force necessary, including assassination or even war to topple an evil dictator like Kim Jong-un. He, he went on to say that many pacifist Christians will cite Romans chapter 12, which obviously is the chapter before Romans chapter 13, and says, do not repay evil for evil. But Jeffress says that this passage does not refer to government. It refers to Christians. And I would agree with him in that. He states that the Bible never commands government to turn the other cheek or to forgive. And to those who would ask about Jesus' Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5, 6, and 7, which Jesus says to love our enemies, that simply does not apply here. He goes on by saying, some Christians, perhaps younger Christians, have to think this through. He said it's antithetical to some of the mushy rhetoric you hear from some circles today. Frankly, it's because they are not well taught in the scriptures. And that's how he ends. They're not well taught in the scriptures. Now, as I stated, he's correct in his assumption that Romans chapter 12 is referring to the behavior of God's people. And although as appealing as it is to the ear of most people that God commends such behavior for us, as he quoted, to use whatever force necessary, including assassination or even war, to topple an evil dictator, and that turning the other cheek or even forgiving them in this matter does not apply here, I strongly challenge that. You see, of course, this is what every American wants to hear, but that doesn't make it true to Scripture. And a mega pastor as Robert Jeffress should know the difference. But my opinion doesn't matter in this and is no more important than Robert Jeffress' opinion in this. Let's go to the Bible and let's see what the Bible says about this using the very text that Robert Jeffress has pointed out here. Romans chapter 13. So if you have your Bible, turn to Romans chapter 13 and let's look at the first few verses. Now he says, let every soul, and let me say before we begin here, this is the book of Romans. Obviously this book wasn't written to the people of Rome. It was written to Christians who had come out from and under the rule of the Roman government. As far as their allegiance was concerned, now their allegiance was to the Lord Jesus Christ and no longer to Rome. And this caused a problem in the way that they thought about things. And what Paul is trying to tell them here is your allegiance to God is your allegiance to Rome. Just because you now serve Jesus and, and have become one of his followers doesn't mean that you don't listen to Rome anymore. And so keep that in mind as we read this. He says, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. Now, when the Roman Christians are reading this, they're thinking of the Roman government, the Roman emperors, Caesar and Pilate and so on. He goes on and he says, there's no power but of God. Good power, evil power, it doesn't matter. Every single one of them have been placed there 
by the divine authority of God himself. The powers that be are ordained of God. Verse 2, whosoever therefore resists that power resists the ordinance of God. Why would you resist a Christian government? A government that's seeking to please the Lord in all its actions and all of its decisions. You wouldn't. The only ones that you would resist would be those who are in conflict with the word of God, with the teachings of scripture. And so obviously the context of what Paul is talking about here is an evil empire, an evil government, not a Christian government. And so he says, they that resist these governments shall receive to themselves damnation. Why? Because they are resisting God, because God is the one that placed them there. Verse 3, rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. If you're not doing anything wrong, you have no reason to fear the higher powers. The only reason you would fear them is if you're doing something wrong. Will you not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister or the agent of God to thee for good. But if you do that which is evil, be afraid. For he bears not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God or the agent of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Now this is where Pastor Jeffries took his statement from. And what Jeffries is implying here is that we as the people of God have a right to fight evil with evil. But that's not what Paul is saying. Paul's saying serve the evil government. Submit to the evil government. As long as they're not having you to bow down to their gods, to worship their gods, to come in direct conflict with the teachings of Scripture, you are to submit to their authority. And so I say all of that this morning, and I bring this to your attention this morning simply because of this. I'll promise you, the majority of people that listen to this statement by Mr. Jeffress yesterday morning when he made this statement was in absolute agreement with what he said. And most likely not one single one of them opened their Bibles to Romans chapter 13 to see what the Bible had to say on this matter. And that's the danger. Too many are listening to too many and taking their word for truth. And so I encourage you as we enter into these darker days, you're going to hear many things that you're going to question. Good for you. Go to the Bible and find out what the Bible has to say. Because if the majority agrees with it, most likely the Bible disagrees with it. Well, I love you, friends. I'm so grateful that you spent a few moments with us this morning. And I'm, I'm especially grateful that we do have the Word of God available to us that we can go to find the truth and that we don't have to be misled by these misguided teachings. Now, I pray that you'll keep Jesus first in all you do and that you'll keep his word the center of your focus and your attention. Now, as he wills, and until tomorrow, friends, I love you and I'll see you on the next video.